Hey, we finally made it to graphing polar equations. Really functions. So this will be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll do a few of these. Graph the polar equation, then find the Cartesian equation. Oh man, we gotta convert an entire function into Cartesian. Okay, we're gonna start with this. R equals six cosine theta. So, nothing crazy, right? We got our independent variable and our dependent variable. So what we're gonna do is just plug in a bunch of different values for theta. And we're gonna find the different values of R that go with those. We're gonna plot those points and then we're gonna connect them. We're just gonna see what graph we get. And it, you know, if you find you don't have enough points uh, to plot, find some more values of theta, plot more points, and see how it plays out. So here's what I set up, and it's it's pretty much already filled in, but not the graph. Um, so what I did, just kind of ignore these values of R for right now. Uh, I set up a table, theta and R, and I picked several values of theta. So you might think, Hey, why'd you only go from zero to pi? Well, it's not obvious uh, at, at the moment at all, but it turns out that the period of this function, if you will, is actually only pi. You would think it would start repeating itself at two pi, but it turns out that's not the case. It actually repeats itself after pi. Um, and so I just know that from experience. But So I would say, Hey, I'd like at least five. I like at least five points. So if I go from zero to pi, um, then obviously pi over two. But then how about pi over four and three pi over four, and that'll give me five, five locations. Okay. Takes a little trial and error sometimes. Nope, no big deal. All right. Well, so I'm just going to go in and plug each of these values of theta in right there. Find out what the radius is. Well, if theta equals zero, then sine of zero is one, and I get a radius of six. If theta is pi over four, all right, cosine pi over four is root two over two, but then I'm gonna multiply by six. So I get three root two, and I'll just show you the rest. Uh, pi over 2, cosine is 0, 3 pi over 4, I've got negative root 2 over 2 times 6. And finally at pi, I get negative 1 times 6 is negative 6. And now it's still not clear why this is repeating, but, but let's just start plotting the points. Okay. Let's just go one at a time. 0 pi over, uh, excuse me, 0, 6 really six zero if it's r theta. So the radius is six, the angle is zero. Okay, I'm just gonna, I don't know, I'm just gonna say it's right there. I don't know. Let's just say that's six, okay. Then I'm gonna start to rotate and you notice the numbers get smaller. So pi over four, three root two, and you're like, I'm not sure where I should put that. I'm gonna place it right there. Pi over two, zero. Okay, so the zero involved. So I'm looking at pi over two, but my radius is zero, so I'm actually just stuck right there at the pole. If your radius is zero, you are at the pole. All right, then I keep rotating. So, you know, I was at zero, I was at pi over four. Here I was looking at pi over two. Now I'm looking at three pi over four, but I have a negative radius. So I'm gonna count back this direction and it's the same you know, distance as we had a moment ago. So I'm gonna count back this direction and I should be directly underneath that previous point. And I, I'm a little bit off here, I think. These should be lined up. All right, you get the idea. These should be lined up vertically. Okay, so I'm pointing this direction, but I've got a negative radius. 
then I get to pi. I'm only halfway around, but I have another negative radius. So I'm looking at pi, but I'm gonna walk backwards six and I'm gonna end up right there. <coughs> so although it doesn't look the same, the first and the last are actually the same location. If I was to continue to go all the way to two pi, then I would just end up repeating these same points again. Because if I, you know, at pi, I was looking this way and I walked back. So if I went here, I would end up having a negative. And then when I look down, the radius would be zero, right? When I was looking this way, I would have that positive radius. And then finally at two pi, I would land back there at six. So it's kind of interesting. All right, anyway, what shape is created here? And you think, okay, as, as it rotates around, the radius is shrinking, and by the time I get to pi over two, it's down to zero. Then it starts, it's negative, but it starts to grow again. It's a circle. It's really cool. Um, turns out, you know, and it's where's it centered? You know, it's centered here at at three zero, um, which is kind of kind of interesting. I mean, where would that be? Where would this point up at the top be in Cartesian? Well, it would be out at three, and then the radius is three, so it'd be over three, up three. That would be the point three three in Cartesian. Um, of course, what I encourage you guys to do, go into Desmos and graph that. I'm just going to check. Yeah, okay. Let me show you how to graph this. Oh, sideways. There you go. You can see my, my video monitor there. Okay, let's... Let's go.